Hey everybody, Chad here again with Flying S Models. Thought I'd show you another tutorial on how to make small actuators, pitot tubes using uh, micro brass tubing. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for frequent updates that I'll be making to help you with your model building. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Facebook forward slash Flying S Models. Let's go ahead and get started. The brass tubing I'll be working with tonight is manufactured by Albion Alloys. It is um, 0.7 millimeter OD by 0.5 millimeter ID, and I've got a smaller section with a smaller uh, ID OD that I'll use for the telescoping portion that goes inside the outer sleeve of the piston, pitot tube, etc., whatever you're making. You can find a link to how to purchase this through Amazon. Let's check out the tubing before we get rolling here. Comes in roughly 12 inch lengths, and you can see here it's basically just micro brass tubing. Very thin wall, hollow in the center. The tools you'll need are very simple a set of tweezers and just a single edge razor blade makes it really easy to cut this brass tubing. I've already got a section and a small section that I've already cut that I'm going to cut again to make a small piston cylinder. So basically to cut it, you just put it down on the cutting mat, you find the length that you want, put the razor blade against it, and then just roll back and forth until you hear it snap, and the small section here is then been cut. You do the same thing with the smaller OD tubing, which I've already done here, and then basically I'm going to take and insert the small OD tubing into the slightly larger tube that I just cut. Sometimes when you cut it, it'll leave a little burr and you'll just need to take your razor blade and run your blade very gently inside to deburr it, like so. So now you can take the piston and put it in what would be the actuator. And basically you can see here, you can go in and out. And you can set the length to whatever you need. Now if I'm making a pitot tube, I use the same technique, and then I just put the inner diameter rod, usually depending on the scale, 132nd or 148th, usually about an eighth of an inch to 3 sixteenths of an inch from the end of the outer brass tubing, just to give a representation of a metallic pitot tube. If you want to get really fancy, you can take some of the foil that I've been using in other videos, ones that we use to make the ID lights and formation lights, and you can drill a small hole in it using a pin vise with a micro drill. In this case, I believe it's a number 75 drill to match the OD of the small tubing. And you can just drill a small hole and that'll be used to make a clevis that the piston will go inside and you have a clevis that you can attach to a gear door or any other device that would be actuated as on a real plane. To make the clevis, you just cut around whatever shape you want around the small hole with a razor blade. In this case, I'll just make a simple square clevis by just cutting out a rectangular shape with this around the small hole. That can be bent into place, folded up on either side, and then the small piston can fit up inside the hole there of the clevis and glued with a small drop of super glue. So here you can see I've bent the small rectangular clevis that we cut out before, and I've just bent it into a U shape and the hole is on the back side. That's where the piston will go down inside. Now I'll show you what I use for the glue applicator. It's another neat little trick here in just a second. So under the theme of waste not, want not, I take all my leftover straight sections of sprue from the model kits. In this case, you can see when you buy a model kit, you'll have the part that you'll actually use to build the model, and then you'll have a leftover sprue gates that they use during the injection molding process. I cut those out into small sections, 
And a lot of people use this technique to make antennas. I don't actually like to make antennas with this because the small uh, plastic will can break. I've got another trick I'll show you later in a, in a separate video that's way better for making antennas. But I just take a lighter and I heat the plastic up to where it starts to bend like so. And then I stretch to get the diameter of the applicator that I want. And then I hold it and let it cool. Once it's cool, you'll see here like so, you can take your razor blade, cut the length you'd like for the applicator, and voila, you have a small, fine-tipped applicator for super glue. So in order to join all the parts together, again, just a tiny amount of super glue, placed on a glossy piece of paper so it doesn't uh, dry out. Take the applicator here, take the piece of tubing that we have made before, and apply the glue to the tubing just a small drop with the small drop of CA applied to the piston you can insert set the length you want and let it dry. Then we'll do the same thing to attach the clevis to the other side of the piston. So using the tweezers, put the clevis onto the piston. Once you have that there, you can take the applicator that you made, just a small drop of super glue, and bond the clevis to the piston. Just like so. So with that, your actuator is complete and you can install it on your model as an actuator for a gear door, a canopy, or any other uh, part of the model that uh, would need to be actuated. And just for fun, using a 148th Tamiya P51 Mustang, for demonstration, I'll show you how the actuator would look. I've taken the actuator, I've slid it down just through a hole here. In reality, it actually would have, the actuator would be in the back here. Uh, but just for, just for demonstration purposes, you can see that you could put the actuator up and attach it to the gear door if this were the right location. And it would provide a lot more realism above what would you would have in a kit part. The nice thing about this too, is you don't have to paint the actuator rod. You just have to paint the actuator housing because the rod itself, in this case, I'd use that uh, aluminum tubing. So there you have it. Using readily available micro tubing, you can create a pitot tube or actuator for your model airplanes, model cars, or any other application. Hope you've enjoyed this demonstration. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and follow me over on Facebook at Facebook forward slash Flying S Models.